Hi. In this tutorial you will learn how to upload a Word document or a PDF to your Moodle so that students can access the file anytime they like. So let's assume again you are logged in to the new Moodle 2 site and uh, once again we'll need to turn editing on. I'm going to my test course again. You will need to turn editing on in your course before you can do any editing. If you've seen the last video, you'll, you'll recognize this uh, piece of text which was uploaded via a label. Note that if you have this block section on the right hand side, you simply double click these little uh, rectangles to, to put them over on the left, assuming you don't want them there. All right, so now it's time to upload the file. We, again, we click on add a resource and choose file. I'm just going to show you where the file is and I've got two versions of it learning resource one and learning resource one all right one's a, a um, word document and one's a PDF so I'm going to choose the PDF and we're going to talk about the word document after this is going to be called learning resource one now I do need to write something in this description box each time it's a slight change with this ver uh, this version. I mean, it's necessary because if you don't, it doesn't work. Uh, uh, sometimes I don't see the point. But anyway, let's just not not go there. You have to put something in that box, so you might as well just put the title. Sometimes a, a further explanation might be relevant, but uh, I'm not going to talk about that just at the moment. Here's the important thing: we need to add a file, and then we need to navigate to it. Now, if We've, if I've already uploaded that file, I would go to Recent Files. If I knew the file was on my server somewhere, I could go there. If it's on the OFGS Dropbox, it could go there. But basically, I'm just going to choose this one, Upload a File, and Browse to it. Now, I know it's on my H drive, so it's just business as usual. I know it's in Tutorial Contents in Moodle 2.0, and there it is there. So I simply click on that, click open, and upload this file. If you didn't quite get that, I'd just recommend you replay that chapter, or that section of the video. So that's uploaded, there it is there. On display, we're just going to leave it at automatic for now, and that's pretty much it. Mostly the default settings just work. Uh, sometimes we'll show you um, some other options. And then save and return to the course. And there you can see that the learning resource one has dropped just below this text. It looks like there's a big gap there, but if I turn editing off, there is quite a gap there. I think that is because there's spaces left under this text. So let's have a look at that. Turn editing on. So we're going back to the label now. This is a good thing that's happened because we need, you need to see how to get around this. Just waiting for the page to load. Okay, so here's my label. I'm going to edit that label. I'm just going to see how far the cursor goes down. Okay, it goes down there. So I'm going to go backspace, backspace, backspace. Um, that should solve our problem of having too much white space underneath the label. Let's have a look. And yes, correct, that worked. So now if I turn editing off, and the reason I'm, doing, I'm turning the editing off is because that's what your students are going to see. That's nice and neat there now. But that, what I just showed you then is a handy thing to know because sometimes you do want to create a bit of white space underneath a label and that's the way to do it. Also, sometimes you want to have one line of white space above the title of your label and that's the way you do it. Let's turn editing back on again. If you need to see how to upload the file, you can... Uh, just watch that part of the video again. Let's talk though, because we don't want you uploading a whole lot of files and then have to having to change it. Let's talk about why you might use the PDF and why you might use a Word document. Basically, the reason to use a PDF is because it does not change regardless of what computer it is opened on. What you see is what you get. With a Word document, however, different computers will, you know, the formatting might be different or the page layout might be a bit different. So that's the reason why you might use a PDF. However, if you want your students to actually edit 
the document, if you want them to work on it, then obviously they're going to have to have a Word document.